Hello and welcome to Scott Plays. Um, sorry it's been quite a while since I, I last recorded a video, um, but I was just playing Marvel Champions, the latest living card game from Fantasy Flight Games, and I thought I'd just record my thoughts about the game um, quickly and um, yeah, brilliant game. Um, I have played uh, quite a few times on Tabletop Simulator. Uh, it was um, a fan created a mod for the, the game sort of not that long after it was announced at Gen Con and um, Team Covenant did their um, sort of preview streams. Um, and then since getting the game I've played uh, six times in total so I don't know how many times on Tabletop Simulator those were mostly two player one game at three players and then yeah in with physical cards I've played uh, seven times in total yeah, five solo games once with each of the five heroes that you get in the core set and then a four player game I took it along to the, the weekly gaming club and played it there with three other people and then I also played another four player game at um, or half of a game really it was a, it was a demo at um, Tabletop Gaming Live in London um, and yeah I mean what can I say about this it's a fantastic game it really is um, the other living card game that I have played uh, mostly is the Arkham game and it has some similarities to that did play a little bit of uh, Legend of Five Rings online um, but I never really got into that. Um, it's, I think for me, cooperative living card games are much more suitable for me now. I mean, sort of 20 years ago, then yeah, the, the competitive ones would have been my thing. But now um, it's the cooperative ones suit me much better and um, partly because you can play them solo um, and yeah this this one is just fantastic I, it, it's I, I really like Arkham Horror uh, the card game but in some respects the Marvel Champions card game is better than that one um, Arkham you have the narrative and it does that incredibly well Marvel Champions doesn't have that however Marvel Champions sets up tears down and plays really quickly now I've only played against the uh, introductory villain um, Rhino who is the simplest to beat he doesn't really uh, put up much of a fight against you um, he mostly wins through achieving his scheme um, he's fairly easy to beat but yeah my games have been lasting sort of 15 to 25 minutes solo um, the other two villains in the core set Claw and Ultron they are more difficult Claw is sort of uh, the middle difficulty and Ultron is the hardest although some people have been reporting that they've found Claw more difficult against certain uh, heroes and deck builds um, and yeah so they're going to probably take longer but overall it plays incredibly quickly um, yeah the the Arkham uh, game it's 
setup is a lot more involved and teardown is a lot more involved unless you're keeping the scenario decks pre-built. Um, with this, it's incredibly simple. You basically take uh, the villain you want to fight, they come with a set of cards. You take one, what they call modular sets, which are in, uh, similar to the encounter sets in uh, the Arkham game. Um, so you take one of those, and then there is a standard and an expert level uh, encounter set. Um, if you're playing on standard, um, the the villains all have three, or, well, most of the ones we've seen all have three stages. The, the latest um, reveal of the, um, what's going to be the second villain pack, uh, which is the, the Wrecking Crew, they work slightly differently in that the... the you're fighting the entire team of the Wrecking Crew and they only essentially have one form. There's there's an A and a B um, side or form, uh, version of them, depending on whether you want to play the, the standard difficulty or the expert difficulty. Um, and those, um, you don't mix the standard or expert encounter sets into their decks um, but all of the other ones we've seen the three that are in the um, core set and Green Goblin who is the first villain pack they all have three forms or three stages and yeah in standard you you play against stage one and stage two and in an expert you play against stage two and stage three and include the expert cards in the, the villain deck um, and so yeah there, there's a, a bit of variety in terms of difficulty and in terms of the villain you face and you can also modify their deck um, unlike in Arkham where the there's a very prescriptive way that you set up the encounter deck for a scenario it lists particular encounter sets that you have to include um, with this there's a recommended encounter set or modular encounter set but you can swap that out for another one um, the only ones that you have to use are the villains encounter set and in most cases other than the wrecking crew the standard or the standard plus the expert if you're playing on expert um, yeah, the other chunk of cards that goes into the um, encounter deck at the beginning of the game, that can be swapped out for other ones. So you've got a lot of variety in there. The core set comes with five of those modular encounter sets. Um, and those have different difficulty ratings as well. Uh, the recommended one for Rhino is like the difficulty one and then Ultron is difficulty three and then there are two more that are more difficult than that. Um, and so yeah, there, there's a various ways you can set up the, the villain deck. The, the villain is trying to achieve a scheme um, and sort of the game is split into two phases, player and villain. Um, I won't go into a lot of detail about how the game plays, but essentially in the villain phase, the villain either attacks you or he progresses his scheme. Um, it progresses a little bit every single round, um, but he may um, put extra, what they call threat on there. Um, yeah, game comes with, because it's a fantasy flight game, it comes with really nice tokens. These are threat tokens, they get put on the schemes. Um, and there are side schemes that can come out. For example, this one comes out when the second stage of Rhino comes out. And then there are other ones that are sort of in the uh, modular encounter sets. And um, yeah, each hero has a nemesis that can appear if a certain card comes out of the 
um, encounter set. They also, every hero has an obligation that always gets shuffled into the encounter set if, again, if you're not playing the Wrecking Crew, because the Wrecking Crew work differently. Uh, yeah, and then on the hero side, so you have in the core set, there are five heroes. Um, they each have a set of um, signature cards that you always play with. And then there are four aspects. You choose one of those aspects. You build the rest of your deck from that aspect and neutral or basic cards. And you're looking to, to get between 40 and 50 cards in total in your deck. Um, and so, yeah, loads of variation in the villain deck loads of variation in the hero deck and each hero can use any aspect um, there's there's no limitation like in um, again the the Arkham Horror game the the investigators are tied to specific uh, I can't remember, can't remember what they're called in Arkham Horror but there's the the five Yeah, what are they called? Not sure, but there's Survivor, Rogue, Mystic, Guardian, Seeker. Yeah, so the the five things, and each investigator is tied to one or more of those, and there's you, know, you get a mix, and you can only use that. There are particular deck building restrictions tied to each character none of that in Marvel Champions every single hero uh, can use any of the aspects uh, which yeah means there's there's loads of scope for, for deck building or there will be when we get more cards it being new and there only being the core set the, the deck building is very limited at this stage um, but even even now, there is some scope for deck building. Uh, yeah, so what else is there to say? Um, five heroes in the core set. I think I mentioned that already. Um, Captain Marvel, who I have just played with, is one of them. Spider-Man, Iron Man, She-Hulk, and Black Panther are the other four. And then Captain America is going to be the first hero pack to be released and then that will be followed at some point by Ms. Marvel. Uh, the exact release order isn't entirely clear. It's When they announced it, if I remember rightly, it was Green Goblin, then Captain... America, then Ms. Marvel, then the Wrecking Crew. Um, the Learn to Play also revealed that Thor would be coming, and so it was speculated that he would probably be the next pack after the Wrecking Crew, and that has been confirmed. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get within the next... or. Oh, Again, the release dates are not clear, but assuming they stick to what they <laughs> originally announced at Gen Con, over the next five months we're going to get another three heroes and another two sets of uh, villains. Um, each hero pack is going to be a pre-constructed deck, so if you don't want to do any... Um, deck building, then you don't have to. The The five heroes in the core set all have a uh, suggested starter deck, so you can just build those. Um, you don't get enough cards in the core set to be able to build all five decks and keep them built, but the way those starter decks works essentially there are two there's Iron Man and She-Hulk that 
basically use the same aspect. So you can swap that part of the deck between those two heroes, and that's your five starter decks set up, uh, essentially. Um, so yeah, if you don't want to do any deck building, you don't have to. You can just treat it as pre-constructed decks and play it that way. Um, and I have only been playing starter decks with my uh, set um, on Tabletop Simulator. Uh, I did a little bit of customization of the deck, but not a huge amount. Um, and yeah, the, the starter decks, they work, partic particularly against Rhino. Rhino is, is easy to beat, but yeah, I mean, the starter decks will, will beat Rhino no problem. Um, well, say no problem. I now, out of the five uh, games I played solo, I've lost two and won three. Um, so played with each hero with their starter deck once, and the two I lost with was Carol Danvers, so... I just lost <laughs> against Rhino with her and uh, She-Hulk. Um, with Carol, I got unlucky. Um, I probably would have been okay if I'd have made a slightly different decision right at the end. Um, and with She-Hulk, it was kind of similar, but with her, I got to a point where it didn't matter whether I was attacked or the villain was scheming. If I drew the wrong cards, I was going to lose, and I drew the wrong cards. I chose to have the villain, because the whether you're in hero or alter ego mode, if you haven't seen the gameplay, that determines what the villain does in the villain phase. Um, and I chose to stay in hero mode, that, which meant, actually, I think that's right. Yes, pretty sure with She-Hulk, I chose to stay in hero mode because she's got quite a lot of uh, health. And I was... Uh, I can't remember how much health I had left. Um, but, yeah, it was a case of either way I was going to lose if particular cards came out. I chose one and those particular cards came out and I lost. And if I'd have gone the other way, it would have been exactly the same because it was like it didn't matter if those particular cards came up. It was game over either way. Um, and yeah, the game tonight was kind of similar but I sh I made a mistake in this one definitely um, I should have picked a different option at the end of the game and that would have given me another round where I could have done uh, probably about 10 points of damage to the second stage of Rhino which would have got him down to about 5 health and then if I'd have survived another round I may have been able to do it I'm not sure I would have survived it would have been really close um, but yeah the the game is really good e each of the heroes feels very different um, and from what I've seen of the other villains it looks like they will feel very different to play against as well so uh, yeah the, the amount of um, variation and replayability in the game is massive, even just from the core set and even without deck building. Um, once we've got more cards to build decks with, then the, yeah, the, the replayability just goes through the roof. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, again, I, c I can't remember how many games I've played on Tabletop Simulator. It's but all told, I've probably played somewhere in the region of a dozen games, and I am not bored with it at all. And I've only played against the one villain, and I still want to play against him more because I just, yeah, it's just so good. And and you know, I mean, with with any 
card game, the order that the cards come out makes a difference to how the game plays. And yeah, it's just, I, I can't, I, I don't have the words to express how good this game is yet. Um, with a bit more play than I might be able to talk about it more eloquently than I am, than I'm managing to tonight. Um, anyway, if you haven't played this game and you like this style of game, um, so cooperative card games with deck construction or possibly not deck construction if you don't want to do that because you don't have to where that you will be getting plenty of expansions in the future if you like that type of game and you haven't played Marvel Champions and you like the IP give it a go it is really good uh, yeah I, it's I, again, I can't. I don't have the words at the moment to to describe just how good it is. Um, so yeah, if you haven't played it, try and try and get a play of it because I I think if those all those things appeal to you, you will love this game. Okay, well I think that's all I'm going to say for the moment. Um, I am intending to put out more videos uh, fairly soon. Um, things, um, sort of my life situation is a bit better. It's still not as good as I'd like it to be, but I've, I've got a bit more energy and motivation and um, time to actually do some videos. So I'm going to start recording some more. I want to start doing some live plays of this. Uh, I need to sort of set things up a bit in the other room to be able to do that, um, sort of clear some space and things. Um, but I'm also going to get back to doing game overviews and um, yeah, eventually I'll start doing some more longer playthroughs and things um, but yeah this this game plays really quickly and doesn't take up a huge amount of space so I think fairly soon I will set up to do some live streams of this game um, and you can you can watch me lose to Claw and Ultron <laughs> um, anyway thank you for watching this one if you stuck to the end um, as I said I'm going I'm planning to put some more videos out um, I would be very grateful if you were to join me for those and um, yeah if you could visit my um, Facebook uh, page like that uh, join the Facebook group if you're not already in that um, I'd like to get some discussion started on there uh, I have a MeWe, um, I can't remember what it calls them on there, I think it's, I think it's a group on MeWe, um, yeah, Google Plus uh, closed down, so I moved to MeWe, um, and of course the YouTube channel. If you're not already subscribed, I would be grateful if you would subscribe to that. All of that will be very helpful for, um, or it will be encouragement at the very least. Um, anyway, I'm I'm rambling now. Thank you again for watching. 